custom one that I've been waiting for. This is the uh, the water car hydrogen fuel cell. And this is the one that, if it works, is making this one of the most legendary hours of television ever broadcast. They're about to see if they can run a car on flammable hydrogen gas produced by electrolysis. This is the instructions on the patent that you bolt the output of the fuel cell right to the throat of your carburetor. There will be no gasoline, just hydrogen fed straight into the carburetor. But will the car even start? We're making history. Oh, oh my God! Oh my God is right. The car's working. But sadly, it's not because of the hydrogen. I think that was a little bit of residual fuel in the system. What do you think? <laughs> I think that's the case. It wasn't a miracle, just some leftover gasoline in the engine. I'm going to turn it over again. Let's give it another shot. <laughs> Come on! All right. My God! It doesn't work. I can't believe it doesn't work. I found it on the internet, man. The electrodes are just not giving off enough gas. But to test whether a car could even run on hydrogen in the first place, the boys are going to hose some directly into the carburetor. Ready? Yeah, OK, right. here we go. <laughs> OK. OK. That's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I guess you could, if you had a lot of hydrogen, run your engine completely without any other modifications. Let's do it again. <laughs> you know there's going to be trouble when it's all going so well. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> OK, that's enough of that test. <laughs> With a rather nasty backfire, it's time to back out. I think it's best if we just let it go. All right, so our dynamometer tests. How did we do with the magnets? Bupkis. Acetone? Bupkis. The hydrogen fuel cell? Less than bupkis. And the, uh, uh, oh, the miracle carburetor? Even less than bupkis. <laughs> and I think we still need some more exploration into ways to Break yourself free of the man's death grip on your wallet. Well, if the ultimate goal is to actually defeat this monopoly of fossil fuels, there is a way to do that, and maybe we can try it out. And where does this mystery solution live? I need some french fries and all the fry oil you can lay on me. Why, the burger bar, of course. That right there, it's the end of the gas conspiracy. Maybe. It's used cooking oil, the gunk that gets left at the bottom of deep fat fryers. And believe it or not, this may be the next big thing. I think that's it. And back at the shop, it's refinery time. Dude, this makes so many things taste so damn good. That's just wrong. Apparently, all that's needed to convert this fatty fry oil into fuel is filter it. That's it. This is obviously something that you do overnight. Not if you're like in a hurry to go get somewhere. I'll be there in a few minutes, man. Come on. <laughs> it's a time consuming process, but given that it could result in free fuel, it's more than worth it. There we go. That's a leader. And to put it to the test, they're going to drive a circuit around Alameda in a diesel car, which has their viewable fuel tank attached. I like this, Jamie. I think this is a nice, solid arrangement. Not going to move. I'm going to just tape that down. Well, as long as you're happy, Adam. Thank you, Jamie. And with everyone happy, it's time to get started. And we've been hearing that people are running their cars completely without any modifications on used vegetable oil like this. But before experimenting with beefed up burger juice, they first need to test regular diesel to find the car's normal fuel consumption. Hold on. You're pretty much exactly at a liter, so give it a tiny bit more. Stop. That's perfect. Exactly right. OK. Diesel, first run. All right. Ready. 
go. The course is 2.9 miles long and has been designed so that they can maintain a steady 35 miles an hour all the way around. We are very close to the end of this leader here, probably about a minute and a half, two minutes away tops. They're going to drive lap after lap until they've used one liter of each fuel. That's it, we are out of fuel. What was the mileage on that? 8.8. 8.8, okay. 15 minutes and 15 seconds. 33 and a third miles to the gallon on straight diesel. With the baseline sussed, next up is the used cooking oil. Ah, oh, look at that, pure power. Pure power it may be, but will the car even start? <laughs> ka -ching. The engine is purring perfectly. And if we don't meet again, I love you. They're off. Remember, this is unmodified French fry oil, the gunk that restaurants up and down the country chuck out. It seems to be running just fine. They do the laps and get an MPG of 30, which for something that didn't cost a dime is pretty darn impressive. Number one, I'm surprised and impressed that the car runs on just straight filtered used kitchen oil. But number two, the fuel efficiency, it's only 10% less than, you know, regular diesel fuel. Yeah, that's cool. The other thing is we didn't make any modifications to this car. That means anybody who had a diesel car could just pour the stuff straight into the gas tank and it would run fine. Woo! Yeah, baby! So what do you think? Do you think the oil companies and the automakers are colluding to screw us? Well, not a single one of the devices we tested did anything at all, with sole exception of used cooking oil. Right, but that didn't make your engine any more efficient, and that only helps because it's currently free. As soon as that becomes a real economy, they're going to charge you for that like anything else. Yeah, and considering the thermal efficiencies of these types of engines, you're simply not going to get these ultra-high mileages out of those. If there was a way to make your engine super crazy efficient, we would know about it. It's busted. Busted.